Hello everyone and welcome to the coverage of Civilization 6 on my channel, a new series, a series that I know several of you have been very eagerly awaiting. Now I've actually had this copy available to me for, well, since it launched. It was given to me by 2K, so I want to make that clear right from the beginning. Um, but I've only played about one or two hours in the game so far, just enough to kind of come to grips with some of the new mechanics and systems that are in the game, and, and none of the nuances of them. So I'm blind in so far as the nuanced gameplay, but not entirely blind to the, the game mechanics that have changed since Civilization V. As you may be aware, if you've been with the channel for a while, I have played all of the previous Civilization games. Not on the channel, you understand, but I've made mention of it from time to time. And I would consider myself, while not a great player, not a bad one either. So, understand where we're, we're coming from going into this series, so you can adjust your expectations accordingly. Now, we're going to be creating a new game. I'm going to be playing on the Prince difficulty. I am a... I really strongly feel that in AI specifically, um, a game should have to stand on its own two feet without cheating. Every difficulty level below Prince gives the AI some sort of negative modifier, and every difficulty above it gives the AI various bonuses. I dislike that. An AI should be challenging on its own. It shouldn't have to cheat in order to be challenging. Now, that's perhaps idealistic, but uh, coming from where I come from in terms of my academic background, this is something I believe quite strongly. So generally, I will refuse to play a game on any kind of cheating AI level. So if the game is not particularly challenging, then that's just the way the game is going to have to present itself. Uh, we're not going to be hiding anything with this. Uh, I will be playing it on standard, I will be playing it on continent, and uh, I'm going to have a standard map size, please. Now, for the leaders, there are many to pick from, and I also have access to Montezuma, which is a DLC uh, leader. Um... Hmm, there are quite a few. I was very, very saddened when I saw that there, there was no Boadicea. There, there were no Celts. This made my heart a little heavy. But, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess we could play Victoria of England. Um, she has better museums. They store more artifacts. And she can have two archaeologists instead of one. Uh, we would have the Pax Britannica. All found or conquered cities on a continent other than your home continent receive a free melee unit. Gain the Redcoat unique unit when the military science technology is researched. Redcoats themselves have plus 10 combat strength when fighting on a continent other than the capitals and have no disembarkation costs, so they can move from land to water without any kind of uh, movement penalty. They also get the Sea Dog, which is a unique Renaissance-era naval unit that replaces the Privateer and can capture enemy ships and cannot be seen until it's adjacent to something, which would be pretty cool. You'd also get the Royal Navy Dockyard, a district unique to England. Now, districts are a, uh, a new feature for Civilization, uh, that is Civilization VI specifically. Um, replaces the Harbour District, also removes the movement penalty for embarking and disembarking to and from this tile. Must be built on coast or lake, because it wouldn't make any sense to build build your harbour in the middle of the mountains unless it was some sort of skyship harbour. Unfortunately, I do not think the technology ever gets that far. Um, they would get plus one movement for all naval units built in dockyard, plus two gold when built on a foreign continent, and plus one trade route capacity. Okay, well, I am sold, Victoria. We will be going with you. And we shall be starting the game. From the first stirrings of life beneath <sighs> water the great beasts of the Stone Age. Everyone loves Sean Bean's voice. To man voice. taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization, on towards the stars. With Sean Bean, your I'm reaching the, the whole Queen journey. Victoria of England, extend your reach beyond your borders and across the face of the globe. Worry not over the possibility of defeat. For your loyal redcoats and overwhelming navy will surely carry the day. With your calm and steady touch, you can bring all lands under England's sway, establishing a true Pax Britannica. Now, okay, so we've got a settler, we've got a warrior, we've got deer, we've got truffles, a luxury resource, bonus resource, tea. <gasps> really? Really? 
There is literally no point in me looking anywhere else. This is where we are going to settle. I will found this city. Eureka! Gaining a city on the coast has given your civilization insight into navigating the waves. Your knowledge of sailing has advanced considerably. Um, this actually comes straight to uh, a nice little uh, new part of the game. Almost every technology has a Eure uh, Eureka criteria, and if you complete that criteria, then the technology gets a massive boost. Uh, like, half of the technology gets researched. This can be in texts that are far, far from where you're currently researching, so eventually you get to them and it's just going to take less time to get them. Um, some of them, there will be quests and other things which will rely on Eureka, so we'll be paying attention to that, but that is fantastic. Ah... <sighs> This is a lovely song. Right, research. I will do my best not to start singing along, but I can make no promises. Uh, right, what do we want to start with? I mean, we could go with sailing, but that feels a little bit crazy. Um, we've got pottery, which gives us the granary, allows harvesting of wheat and rice. Cattle and sheep there with animal husbandry. We could go for mining. Astrology, which would give us the shrine. It would also make the holy site district available to us, and it would also make Stonehenge available to us. Whereas this would give us the galley and fishing boats. Um, well, we would need animal husbandry for those two, so I guess we could go for that. But we have got fish right up there. Hmm. No, actually, I think we're going to go for, for for sailing first off, since they're pretty much all the same. We'll go with sailing. With our first warrior, uh, actually, let's go into L London and see what we can do. There is no way that I have found that I can rename cities as much as I would like to. There, is, there doesn't appear to be a way of doing that. And the UI takes a little getting used to from Civ 5 and from Beyond Earth. To gain amenities, improve luxury resources. Now, amenities are necessary as your population grows it stacks against amenities if you don't have enough amenities your population starts getting unhappy if you have enough then they become happy or rather neutral and then get happy as you get over the amount that they need so on and so forth uh citizens seven turns until a new citizen is born um we're getting one amenity from entertainment i'm not sure what we're really doing to entertain the population but i am glad housing from buildings now housing is an important thing as well different buildings we build will give us different housing which will allow our population to grow without feeling overcrowded so on and so forth and um, once the you've exceeded your housing limit you start to grow a lot so you still grow but it's a lot lot slower. Uh, buildings District. Ah, uh, we've got the Palace, which is probably providing us some entertainment. Uh, zero Districts constructed of one possible. We have also got no religion to speak of. Very well. Well, I would like to manage the production. Uh, builders would be good, but a scout is much more important this early on. Slingers would also be kind of good, but I'm going to go with a scout because it, of its speed and just our general ability to uh, check out what's going on around the map. Now, we've started over here, and I would actually kind of like to uh, poke my head out, find out what's going on over there. Um, initially, I thought that was, even though I've read it, truffles, initially I thought that looked like a fox, but no, it's a pig. It's a pig uh, just rummaging through the roughage looking for truffles very well okay next turn all right uh warrior it's gonna take you more moving points really to move down there so i just want to check out in this direction first so what are we gonna find we can see a mountain way way over there okay unfortunately no space auto uh end turn uh, maybe i can set that up at some point some milk down there, some cattle, it also requires animal husbandry. Okay, so we've got a couple of things that we can use animal husbandry on. These hills are going to kind of be a pain to move through. But the first thing is I'm just going to use my... Oh, another tea plantation. This is amazing. I'm probably going to get a city down here by the river so I can harvest more and more tea. Now, from what I've seen in the, in the short amount of time that I've played... Ooh. Hello, Barbarian Scout. The... Um, cities do expand a little bit differently to uh, to the past, and you build districts direct on the map. You don't build them through the city. You might have noticed that when I go to the city, I don't bring up like a city screen. Everything is done on the map now, which is actually quite quite interesting. We're going to grow in three turns. How many turns? Two turns until we got a scout. That is that is reasonable. 
I'll probably build a slinger after that to try and uh, protect the city while I have the scout out and about looking around. Ooh, what did I just discover? I discovered a, a little town down here. Um, tribal village plus two food. Is that if I had that village in the area of my... Reconnaissance units like scouts are unique in that okay. they can gain experience by exploring and discovering parts of the world. Okay, thank you very much. Well, given that, I am going to have my uh, warriors go and check out this village. Bom dia. É uma honra conhecer that was not what I was expecting to happen. Parece que mentes brilhantes se atraem. Well, that's very nice of you. Good day! It's an honor to meet you in person, Yakety Schmackety. Uh, it seems great minds do attract each other after all. Well, you've got a fairly high opinion of yourself, but also a high opinion of me, so I guess I will forgive it for now. It is an honor to meet you. Or I could say, well met, stranger, but I'm afraid we are too busy to stay in chat. No, I'll say it's an honor to meet you. Come to Brazil. Do you know how to dance samba? It doesn't matter. You will enjoy the carnival regardless. Now, we could say, we would love to sample your hospitality, or sorry, but not at this time. I, basically, I think this is the, um, the the two leaders saying, this is where my capital is. Would you like to come and, and visit? And as a result, you know where they lived, um, or where their capital is. There we are. I can see where Brazil is, even though I've not been down there. After meeting another civilization, you see the need for new ways to communicate. Your knowledge of writing has advanced considerably. Marvellous. On the plus side, they also know where I am now. Uh, however, I have no idea what we just discovered. Uh, I, I I have no idea what we got from from that. Was it just two food? Was, was it was it gold? Was it something even more useful? I have no idea. All right, I want to make a slinger at this point. We'll take seven turns. I've got. Did I get two? What? Oh. Did the... Did I get given a scout, perhaps? That could be what happened. I may have been given a scout as a result of finding that village. That would be particularly useful. Okay, well, uh, time to start moving out, then. There we go. Now we've got some copper over there. I wasn't initially aware of what that, that was meant to be. It's copper pipe. It makes more sense when you realize it, but for a little while I was like, what on earth? Why? What is that meant to try and tell me? I really enjoy the music in this game. It does a very good job. Ooh. Possible opportunity to attack. No. Lost. Damn it. Okay, let's have a look over here. So many sheep, tea, milk, stone. Oh, this is glorious. I like it. I'm going to need to get a settler really really fast. I'm going to skip the rest of your turn. I'm going to continue moving up here. More tea! There are just too many places to pick from. Silk as well! Dear lord! I really need like four settlers right now! <sighs> too many choices. Too many choices, but only two more turns until we discover sailing, which I'm very happy with. Let's head up there. Unit needs orders. Which one? This one. Some rice. Okay. Now, not all of these will uh, be uh, strategic or luxury. I imagine strategic resources are still a thing. Horses and such. And they are, they limit your ability to produce units. Luxury resources generally just make your population happy. But I'm not sure that they make your population happy on a global scale. I think they just make the population of the city which is working them happy. I think they count as amenities for that city. Um, then you've got bonus resources. I'm not actually sure what the difference between luxury and bonus is, to be perfectly honest. Maybe it's just that it makes that tile more um, productive in a certain way. That would be my guess, but I couldn't say for certain. Need to have a look down here. I really like the map as well. Vessels large may venture more. But little boats should keep near shore. I like that. That is quite an amusing little rhyme. Okay, we could go for ship building, which would give us a class as no. 56 turns, you are having a laugh. I will, however, go for animal husbandry. I would very much like to be able to make use of the truffles and the deer that we have there. Okay. Now this... Uh, I believe is basically when you enter this zone um, 
kind of locks you in. You can't pass through this zone. You can move to attack the unit that's basically controlling this tile. But it's a, effectively the sphere of influence of this tile. If I move there, then the only thing I can do then is attack. I can't move out of that tile and move past the enemy. Um, and we're, we're more or less the same strength. Oh dear, some spearmen just up there. Now, down in the bottom, this was not immediately intuitive to me. I struggled for a little while until I could work out that I am always on the right. The enemy is always on the left. It isn't that obvious to start out with. But I'm not super strong against you, so I'm not entirely sure that I would like to fight you. I think I would prefer to bring my barbarians over. Uh, that's barbarians? No, I mean my warriors. They're not barbarians, damn it. Oh, I could attack, though, and I will do a little bit of damage, so I'll give it a try. Let's just hope that they don't come out and try and back up their scouts. 4 EXP. EXP is always worth it, and I can always back up, off and uh, heal later on. As long as they don't get the killing blow. No, nope, they're not interested. They're skedaddling, but I'm going to continue moving my warrior out there. And I would like to see what we can see from here. Some more silk. Okay. And you can head on this way. Alright. Now, Slinger in two turns, Animal Husbandry in six. We are also building up um, civics through our culture. I think it's through culture that this one goes up. Um, but we will eventually... We have the civics tree. And it's effectively, civics is like... Um, it's it more or less like research. But it allows me to tailor my civilization. In Civilization 5, you had the policies, but you locked those in. Once you made a choice, that was it. That was your choice. And you you had various different um, policy paths you could go down. And once you completely finished out a path, you got some sort of like set bonus, if you want to think of it like that. Civics work very differently in Civilization 6. And we'll cover it more once we've actually got access to it. There's not too much point in going over it right now. But it will become a big part of the game. Understand, though, the main thing is that they're not locked in. You can change them uh, once you've made your choice. And that's a big thing. Uh, well, I mean, if you ask us a little bit later, we'll control most of the planet. That's pretty good. You know, many, many times the amount of land that you control. But, you know, who's counting except us? Because we clearly are. And then we lose it all. It's a bad, bad time. And then it just all crumbles and, ah. Uh. Still got the tea, though. So I consider that a net gain. I'm Gogo Kreen of Sparta and leader of the Greeks. Who are you and what victories do you speak of? It is an honor to meet you. All the same. We have a city nearby. Would you like to visit and sample our hearty black broth? Uh, sure, we would love to sample your hospitality. I have no idea what's in hearty black broth, but I'm suspecting that it's probably not something good. Right, yeah, we don't want to fight any uh, spearmen. As it happens, not on my list of things that I want to do today. Oh, wow. Okay. Why do you come before the immortal son of heaven? The great, um... I'm not sure how to pronounce Q, I, I, I say... Queen Shi Huang? That is probably terribly pronounced, and I do apologize. Uh, it is an honor to meet you, and we would love to sample your hospitality. What are you going to offer, though? We have a city nearby. Would you like to visit? Our sculptures are getting quite good at working in terracotta. Oh, fair enough. Now, where are you? You're just over there. Okay. You know, there's a part of me that is actually deeply, deeply saddened by the fact that more of these people are not on different continents. That's like a massive bonus that we get when fighting people who are not on the same continent as me. And yet, here we are. All of these people on the same continent as me. I can't help but feel that I'm the butt of some great joke that, that life is just there. Laughing at me right now. Scallywag life. Uh, well, I, I'm not going to have my slingers leave, but they are quite powerful. 
Um, range strength of 15. Your strength is 20. No, this lingers can can hang back, I guess, and just protect my, my city. I know that's prob probably a, a silly thing to do. I should probably be a bit more aggressive with my early units, but I, I'm always like this when I play Civ. I always like to have at least one in my, in my city. I can go for 13 turns for a settler or builder for 8 turns. Um... Now, the builders work very differently in Civ to the way that they... Uh, sorry, Civ 6 to the way they did in Civ 5, or, in fact, any of the Civs. You don't use the builders... You don't, like, make a builder and then send her out and just keep that builder for the from then on. It can do a certain amount of building actions, but they're pretty fast when they do them. They just go to a tower and they build it. Um, they can be used three times, for example. Settler uh, may create a new city. Your population will drop by one when it's finished, rather than just not growing while while it's going. It's effectively the same thing, really. But we're going to go for a build and start working on our lands. I think that's important. Then the uh, the um, settler will be the next thing that we get, I think. Okay, now we can start moving in closer to the spearmen. Uh, unfortunately, they're going to get the first turn. I, I'm not too keen on that, so I'm just going to chill out over here for now. And then I will attack them in a moment. Inspiration. Having discovered another continent, we realize there is a wide world of trading opportunities. Another con- what? I've discovered another continent? Really? What? What? When? Why? Where? Uh, lenses. Continents. Is that considered another continent? What? That makes no sense, but I'm glad about it. But really, is that con genuinely considered another continent? Because, I mean, hmm. Okay. Fair enough, I guess. I wouldn't have said it was, but uh, what do I know? Nothing, apparently. Alright, we've got some new tribal villages over there. New continent discovered. That's fine. Now, um, yeah, sure, I would like to poke my head down here and just see if we can pass by you. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like that's actually the coastline there. Okay, you've made a new warrior. Enacting new okay. policies in our government can be of great benefit. Our people await your decree. Very well, it we have wisdom, unlocked a new system. authority that makes a law. Very well, Thomas Hobbes. With your people enthused to try code of laws, government and social policy changes are free this turn. Now that's important to note because you can do it for free, otherwise you've got to... Uh, I'm not sure what you pay, but you have to pay for it. It's not a, a free uh, change. I Again, I haven't played a lot of the game so far. I've played enough of it to understand some of the... Uh, some of the new mechanics. We have different governments that we'll unlock at different points. Um, once we've unlocked political philosophy, we get that. Three different texts there, three different texts here, but all these three government types are unlocked with this. And they have lasting effects. For the amount of time that you've got it, it will make a permanent effect on your people. But whilst you've got it, it'll have a very drastic effect. And then you can change something else. You lose that drastic bonus. But for the amount of time that you've been under the effect of that particular type of government, it will have made a permanent change to the culture of your civilization, which is really a, a cool mechanic. Uh, right. My government currently, we are chiefdom legacy bonuses. Legacy bonuses are the learning uh, learned benefits that stay with us as we progress through different systems of government. The learned policy symbol indicates a government bonus that will accumulate over time. We don't get any right now. Uh, we have one military policy, one economic policy. There's diplomatic policies and wildcard policies where you can just put anything in. Obviously the colour code here implies that you can only put military style civics in military policies. Now survey double experience for recon units or discipline plus five unit combat strength when fighting barbarians. I think that would be particularly useful right now. Urban planning plus one production in all cities or god king plus one faith and one gold for the capital city. I've only got the capital city right now and I would like to actually start generating faith so that we can look at setting up a religion in the very near future. So we're going to go with those. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Now, my warriors are going to gain a little bit of uh, an advantage when fighting against barbarians. However, 
the uh, barbarians, yeah, they're in a fairly good position, honestly. So, I'll come out on top-ish, kind of, maybe. Unfortunately, the moment we move in there, it's turnover. I thought perhaps I'd be able to take two moves, but it's not. Once I entered that zone, I stopped moving. A shame. Now we can choose a new civic to look at, though. So we've got craftsmanship. Uh, boost uh, improves three tiles. So I just need to have my builder improve three tiles, and then I'd get the Eureka boost. Or down here, discover a second continent. We've already done that one. So this one would be a lot faster for us to get. Trader may make and maintain a single trade route, automatically creates roads as it travels. Now that is a big change from pretty much all of the civilizations before. Your traders now make roads as they as they move to and fro along trade routes. Um, I'm not sure if you can even make them normally yourself. Ca uh, caravan Saris, uh, plus two gold from all trade routes. Maritime Industries, 100% production towards ancient and classical era naval units and joint war. Establish a joint war against target civilization. Or we can go for craftsmanship, which plus 30% production towards builders and plus 50% production towards ancient and classical era melee and range units. I'm obviously going to go with foreign trade since it's a lot closer. Though I suspect we'll be able to get the boost for craftsmen fairly soon. Right, well... Oh, no, we can actually go past. That's rather good. Uh, we could fortify until healed. Not sure I should be fortifying until healed right on the border there, but uh, oh well. And uh, you can go ahead and fortify for the second as well, and then we'll pass a turn. Righty-ho. Over here we go, and... I can't get over there, really? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just explore the rest of this for now. Spartan delegation honors you with gifts of olive oil and black broth. Accept them with honor. Your delegation is most welcome. Our capital is not open to visitors at this time. Goodbye. Right, a delegation is effectively an early embassy, if you want to think of it like that. Yes, I accept. Your delegation is most welcome. Excellent. And that will start building up access. Uh, we'll have a look at that right now. So if we... Oh, actually, once my turn begins. If we have a look at Gorgo... If we look down here, last 10 turns, nothing to report in the last 10 turns. Go that's the gossip level. Uh, gossip items, rather. Access level. Now, this is what we're talking about here. Um, currently, city conquest, religion founded, declarations of war, weapons of mass destruction strikes. I would have access to all of this information from this civilization at access level none. It's just such a big thing that I will hear about it no matter what. However... To learn about their alliances, their government changes, denunciations, cities founded, trade deals enacted, and trade deals reneged, I'd need the next access level. And to raise it, I can research the printing technology, send a delegation, or establish an embassy. So just by having an embassy or a delegation there, we increase our ties enough that information starts flowing. And only at a little rate, and there are many different access levels. But I'm going to try and send a delegation. Let's see if they will accept it. Spartans are not interested in material goods, but I thank you for the gifts your delegation brought me. Goodbye. So now I have a limited access. So I can now see these. If I want to try and take that further, I'd be able to see districts constructed, great people recruited, hidden agendas revealed, and wonders started. Now, hidden agendas, um, I think, are like personality traits that would benefit us or, or penalize us in like our relationship with them and so on and so forth. Um, in fact, let me just have a look. How much gold have I got? I've got enough that I could send a delegation to all of them, really. Sure, let's uh, try and send out a delegation to you. We politely refuse a delegation. Ah, oh, doesn't want to be friends. What a what a jerk. How about you? Ah, oh, you're all jerks. I wonder if I actually spent that money. No, I didn't. Okay, not quite as much of a jerks as I was first uh, under the impression you might be. Didn't like the idea of you just saying, no, no, you can't come over here. And well, take your gold, though. Uh, let's see. Oh, will you receive our diplomatic delegation to your capital? Really? You have some, some gall. All right. Excellent. I will try to build relations with my neighbors. Oh, dear. 
That's not good. Two on one is not uh, not strictly what I want to be fighting there. If there However, are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. I cannot possibly agree more with this. But because I was fortified, they lost a lot more coming out and fighting me. So I could attack them. It would almost be a full defeat. Eh, but I think I would prefer to remain fortified and just allow them to attack me right now. Uh, down here, how are we doing? I think it's time that we move on. I don't want to be hanging around their borders for over long. However, you are free to make an attack. You'll get a plus five advantage versus barbarians, but they will get plus three for ideal terrain. Not too great, but ultimately we're going to come out on top. Possibly. There we go. They lost 29, and we lost 31. So actually, no, they they did not lose quite as much as we did. But I think that's where we're going to wrap up this first episode. We have new research to look into in the very next turn. So I hope you've enjoyed this beginning episode for the series and will be joining me for the remainder. Do leave me any feedback down in the comments below and a like on the video to let me know that you're interested in seeing more Civ 6 in the future. But until then... Take care, everyone.